how to add your modules and your lectures into your Thinkific school. So what you're going to do is when you are inside your uh, Thinkific school here, you're going to click on My Courses and this will take you to all of the courses that you're working on, whether they're published or unpublished. So we have one here that we've just started. We're going to click on that course and it will bring up a page that looks a little something like this. Now we're going to look at these tabs along the top here. So on the top left hand side you have curriculum and this is where your course curriculum is going to go i.e. your modules and your lectures. Now there's different terminology here let's just address this because we all use different words um, and we'll just recognize what they're called here. Now the chapter of a book for instance we are all familiar with it's a large section and within that chapter there are often subheadings and subsections. Now in the world of online learning a chapter could also be called a module. A module is a grouping, a large section that contains subsections or subheadings inside it. So in this case those subheadings or subsections are called lectures. Now they could also be called however content. <laughs> so there's lots of different words we use but let's call it this. A module is also a chapter in Thinkific. A lecture or a video could be a type of content inside Thinkific. So let me just give you an overview first of all. Now what we might do first of all is just go in and add our major chapters or our major module sections. Now I'm just going to show you what this might look like from a school or a course that's already completed just so you can start seeing this in your mind's eye from the completed end first. So here is uh, one of my Thinkific pages. This is for my um, how to create your own profitable courses course, which you're watching right now, or maybe watching right now if you're inside the course. So what happens here is this is uh, sort of what your uh, curriculum box will look like at the end to your student. So you see here how you have a section. Now that's called a module or in Thinkific's case, a, a chapter. So you've got your chapters here that are, are highlighted by, in this case, a black section. And inside that you have each of your, mod, uh, your lectures or content. And there's lots of different types of content. You can see here on the right hand side you have videos, you can have text files, you can have discussions. Um, I've got some, another download here. And there's lots of different ways that you can deliver your content. So this could be content or it could be called a lecture. Now you may hear me refer to these as lectures and modules. So that's what the end result looks like. Let's go back to our school here. Now the first module, as you can see from my example here, I I often call the introduction to the course. So let's pop back into this ladies school here and we may call this introduction to the course. You might call it welcome, you might call it overview. So whatever you want to call it, there's no right or wrong here, please go with whatever you prefer. So the first thing I do is now go through and add all of my chapters or my major modules. So I've got my course plan over here um, and I'm just quite simply gonna go through and just now copy and paste each of my major headings. And uh, you'll see here, the first one I did, I wrote in lower sentence case, the first one I've written in capital letters. So unlike that make sure that you do make it nice and consistent you want everything to look the same and be presented in the same way you don't want it to look like I've got it here which is a little bit of a mix mash a mess right so as we now go through we're going to just quite simply press add a chapter come over to the right hand side and type our chapter title in here and press save changes Yep, so again, uh, we want to add another chapter. We would come down to our curriculum, we'd press add chapter, and quite simply press paste. So I'm now gonna go through and do that first of all. Now, once I've done that for all of the different chapters, what I would then go and do afterwards is then uh, go through and decide what all of my content type is going to be. So one of the first videos I always do in one of my courses is a, is a welcome to the course, an overview. Hello, thanks for joining. This video is for the people who are inside your course, they've already joined. So it's the first one I like to give. So now you see we have our major chapter or module. Now we're gonna press the add content button. So you see here now, there are actually multiple ways that you can be delivering this, uh, this video, this video, this piece of content or this particular lecture. So you can could make it a video. So you'd press the video button 
and you can then put in the title of the video. You can decide whether or not you want it to be part of the free trial. So this is interesting. When you tick this box, that's easy as it is, that's, that's all you have to do. <laughs> what will happen is on the student's view, they will see this little free button now pop up next to that particular lecture. Now what's cool about this is when your students are viewing your landing page and they can see that they can get a free taster of the course, it really can increase the conversion rates of people signing up. People are very untrusting these days. They're a little bit nervous to give away their money to people that they don't know even to people that they do know sometimes. So what we want to do here is we really want to encourage our students to have a little sample, have a little taste, to get to know us, give them the opportunity to see that we are who we say we are, give them the opportunity to see whether they like our teaching style or the way that we present and speak, give them the opportunity to see um, for themselves that we are the expert that we're saying we are. So that's the first reason why it converts highly uh, really well. But secondly, the re other reason why I love this method is with Thinkific, your students have to enroll in your school and the course in order to view that free content content, which means that you get their email address and if they only view the free trial and they don't go on to buy the rest of the course, this is where you can open up maybe a line of communication with them and ask them for some feedback. You know, I see that you enrolled in the free trial, but you decided not to move on to the paid program. Can I ask why? Was it something you didn't like? Can I improve the style? Was it, did it just not come across as right for you? And you can really A, get great feedback about the presentation or the course content or whatever it might be to improve prove it but also it could just be a really nice way to remind people that there is an opportunity for them to go on and take the rest of the course um, with maybe a small payment you can even and this is something I like to do offer them a discount to then go on and take the full course to encourage them to to go and enroll so there's lots of ways that you can use this, but clearly it's a fantastic way to give people that taster, see who you are, and for you to collect email addresses and use the whole free trial process actually as a lead magnet for your, for your course too. So let's go back into our course here. Um, so by ticking or unticking that, we'll simply add that free trial or remove the free trial. Now as soon as you tick, a, tick one lecture as a free trial, what will happen on your Thinkific landing page is it will pop up with a box, or sorry, a button next to your payment button that will give them the option to either pay now or do the free trial. So that will just automatically come up by default as a result of ticking this box, okay? Now setting it to draft, this means that only you or the editors behind the scene can even see that this lecture exists. Um, if you, for instance, are just drawing out your course plan, and you've set your course to public, for instance, to start getting pre-sales or to start getting interest in the product, but you don't want people to see some of the content or some of the things you're still working on, by setting it to draft, it means it will actually remove it from that landing page, even though you can see it in here, the public can't see it on the landing page. So it's great if you're working on something behind the scenes. Um, do you want to make your video downloadable or not? Now, look, nothing out there in the big world, wide online world is ever truly safe. But look, as long as you have got um, URLs, your video URL, your logo, and your big face <laughs> on your videos, do you know what? Sometimes I'm like, hey, if anyone pilots or pirate, pirates, pilots, <laughs> pirates my content, I actually kind of see it as a favor. I'm like, yeah, cheers for the free promotion, guys. If you're spreading me out to people that otherwise wouldn't have found it, albeit through the black market, <laughs> it's still my face, it's still my presentation, I'm gonna put my video, my website URL on there. So, you know, the chances are, it might just be some free exposure. So look, just get okay with the fact that you're, if you're putting your stuff online, there's chances that people are gonna get hold of that content, perhaps not the most legal way. So just kind of deal with that. But um, this is where you can obviously set it in the system to be, no, I do not want people to be able to download this. They have to be logged into the school. Um, you, would, you maybe would make this downloadable if you have, I don't know, maybe MP3 files or something you want people to be able to do that perhaps maybe they've got you know, insecure internet connection or something. I don't know, all sorts of reasons why you might choose that. Autoplay is another option you can have. Now, uh, I keep my videos often quite short, so I keep my autoplay button always ticked. Now, what this means is the video will play and then it will automatically start playing the next one and automatically start playing the next one. So if people are listening to your course in their pocket or while they're driving or while they're cooking the dinner, they don't have to keep getting their phone out to press the next button. They don't have to 
keep clicking next. You know, it's just going to keep going through. I want to try and get the highest completion rates possible for my course because if people are finishing, they're going to be enjoying it and getting the results that they want. And when they get the results, they're then going to go and tell their friends about those result results. And uh, that's where you get your great uh, re referral marketing coming in. So. I like to make it as easy as possible for people to complete the program. And sometimes that can be just making it as easy as not asking them to keep having to click a next button. You know, these small little things can make a big difference. So I keep my autoplay ticked on. So all we're gonna do then is we're gonna um, start entering our video titles and press save changes. Now you'll see in my course plan here, I've got the wording video TH. This is my own method. Uh, this means video talking head. So I'm a talking head right now because my head is talking at you on the screen. So I've actually done this by putting a, a green screen up behind me. Um, I'm just sat at my desk right now on my normal office chair. I've just put some lighting up around my desk right now so that it doesn't look all dark and dreary. I'm only using my webcam, it's nothing special. Uh, but by having this green screen up behind me, it enables me to put my head talking like this without you actually having to look at my whole office in the background. And therefore, because I've got a square background behind me, you know, it would take up some of this screen casting that you're seeing up here. You know, if uh, if I had that that big square webcam box, I wouldn't be able to remove that background and it would just be taking up some of this content that's behind me. So a talking head is literally a talking head. <laughs> uh, discuss, we'll talk about some of those in the moment, but this is where I'd go through now and I'd say, you know, video, this might be a screencast video. Um, uh, this might just be a voice over a PowerPoint slide. So this is where I decide in the planning process what each piece of content is going to be. So let's have a look at some of those pieces of content lecture types for you now. Um, you've got quizzes, you can do, that speaks for itself really, doesn't it? <laughs> multimedia, now this one's an interesting one. What happens with the multimedia file is that, uh, let's pretend we're gonna, we're gonna make one now. Basically, you can give this a title, blah, 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 blah. And you can put the URL to pretty much anything. You could make a URL to a live webinar, a Facebook live stream, uh, maybe a Facebook post that you put up, a website, a YouTube video. This is where you might want to bring in external resources for people without actually sending them outside of your website. Cool, huh? Right? So this is really, really handy. Um, you know, I don't know if any of you have heard of like the live stream platform Blab. It's it's now dead. But, you know, for instance, uh, I was running live Blab recordings or doing interviews with people on that platform because it was open to the public. People could, I could get reach that way. And then I was popping the URL to that Blab recording in here so that my students could watch that without having to go and sign up to Blab, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, all kinds of things you can put in here, Google Documents and files, you can put URLs to surveys, absolutely limitless with what you could put in here as a URL. So that's a very, very cool one. So I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want that in here. What else have we got? Text files. Now this is uh, basically just like a Word document. So you could type in here, you can add in YouTube videos, you can add in videos from your own video library inside your Thinkific school. So this is good like where let's pretend we wanted to add uh, a video that we just recorded like this one. Video would go in and then we wanted to like put a link or some notes or something beneath that. This is where we can really start to make quite a customized page for ourselves and for our learners here. You know, we can add in uh, links and files and tables, um, a whole range of different stuff. Um, alternatively, it may just be, be some extra reading or some notes or a list of clickable links that people might want to go and do. You can use this obviously however you wish, but just to let you know that that is there. I'll cancel that one. Now, you've got two different uh, things here that might seem similar. You've got a PDF lecture type and you've got a download lecture type. Now the cool thing about the PDF lecture type is that when you drag and drop and upload a PDF file into here, when the student views it from the student's end, they actually can see that PDF file live. They can see it open where you don't have to actually click on anything and open it up in Adobe or anything like that. It will actually be open and viewable right there inside the school on the screen for them. So that's nice if you've got people that might not have like PDF viewers on their computers or anything um, because it will just be there for them to see. Again, you can choose whether or not you want that content to be downloadable or not downloadable by simply clicking the tick or unclicking the tick. And uh, the download slightly different 
Quite simply, this could be any type of file imaginable um, where people can quite literally just press a download button and down it comes onto their computer. Um, discuss. Now, this is a, a discussion feature. It's an external service outside of the Thinkific platform that has a direct integration. So if you go and set up a Discuss account, which is completely free, basically you can select this as a, discuss, as a lecture feature and you can start creating discussion boards right there inside your course. So I like to use that discussion feature right at the beginning of a course so I can get people talking and introducing themselves and starting to engage immediately. It's quite good for search engine optimization as well this a little bit sneaky now I'm not a total Google geek but I've been told enough and learned enough that um, websites that have a lot of activity and a lot of engagement are more favored by Google so therefore if you've got uh, a school where there's lots of activity there's lots of conversation going on the chances are that uh, it's going to be a higher likelihood that your course is going to come up in search results if people are searching for your keywords so not only is it great to get your students and in got involved in starting to build a community and getting people to build relationships with each other inside your course but also just for that search engine optimization as well later on down the line so look don't overuse it because it'll get annoying um, but you can use this really really well for both purposes is. So that's all you do. Once you've connected your Discuss account once, then you'll never need to connect it again. And, and later on in this course, we're going to go through just how to connect that together. It's a lot easier than you might think as well. Now, audio, um, this is quite simply just uploading an MP3 file. So you can put some notes and comments and discussions. You drag and drop your MP3 file. I see a lot of instructors using this for, I know, meditations or people putting uh, audio recordings of the course in here at the end of their courses so that people can just listen to their course instead of watch their course. Lots of different things obviously you could use the audio for. Um, exams speak for themselves. Now presentation, this is a little bit different. The presentation feature basically allows you to record your voice over a PowerPoint presentation saved as a PDF directly from within your Thinkific school. Great if you don't have any uh, sort of filming software like Camtasia or ScreenFlow or anything. Great if you don't have any of that to put your voice over a screencasting piece of software However, I would say to people that perhaps it's not my favorite feature here on Thinkific because it saves that file within the Thinkific school itself. It's not a file that you can extract at the moment, meaning that you can't repurpose that content anywhere else. So personally, I would rather have uh, like an MP4 version of a screencast, which you can use in Camtasia or ScreenFlow, lots of screencasting or screen recording pieces of software and apps out there. Um, and record that on my computer, save it as an MP4, and then upload that as a file in its own right to my Thinkific school, just so that I've got a backup of that content and I can reuse that to MP4 file anywhere I like, such as on YouTube or on Facebook to actually promote my course as well. So I'll leave that one up to you. So I hope that's given you a good idea of the different types of content that are available, the different types of lectures that you can create to really get your juices flowing about all the different ways that you could deliver your content. So all I would do now is go through and start to add in each of these different lectures. Um, so now I've, I've saved that accidentally as an audio file. I'm gonna just change that. So yes, I want to cancel. I want to add a video file and the title will be that. I'm gonna press autoplay. I'm gonna set this one to making it the free trial and I'm gonna save changes. So again, um, meet the trainer. This is a video I normally add in in all of my courses because people wanna know who's teaching the course. So <laughs> welcome to the course and meet the trainer. It's always a fantastic one to add in. In so that your students can get to know what program they're enrolling on um, and also to know a little bit about you as the instructor. And then finally, uh, this uh, discussion one is always one that I add in in the beginning as well. Now, I can't press that at the moment because of the fact that I haven't integrated Discuss yet. We're going to show you how to do that. So now I've entered the lectures for the first module. I'm now going to go to the second module, which is in this case called You Do Have a Page Turning Story. I'm going to copy this lecture title and I'm going to go into this chapter now, this module, press add content, this will be a video, paste and autoplay, save changes. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to add all of my modules first, add all of my lectures and then we are going to make sure that each time we're pressing save changes and I'll see you in the next lecture.